Okay, well, um, this is a partnership and um, we began a number of years ago. Gosh, oh, approach 15, 15 years. Um, it's it's a, a project putting together two programs at, at, at two different schools. Um, you know a bit about Fordham. Uh, we have a BSW and MSW, a PhD program. We have a large online program. Um, also um, putting together with Mount Sinai, which is one of the largest health care systems in New York. In New York. And it's um, located, I come School of Medicine is a medical school, but the clinical and research programs. And we established it in 2013. So we're, we're approaching our 20th year anniversary, I think. Thank you, Elaine. I know it was a lot of work um, to get this program, um, the dual degree program across two different institutions off the ground. And that was certainly before my time with the program. And I believe it was also before Jen, before, uh, before your time with the program. So, so thank you, Elaine, for, um, for uh, carrying the torch and, and making it happen. Uh, it's no easy task uh, across two various institutions. So I wanted to tell you, you all a little bit about public health social work. So the whole, why should we combine public health with social work? First of all, and some of you already said, this is your reason for coming here. We are in the middle of a once in a lifetime, hopefully global pandemic. The importance of public health uh, could not be clearer um, right at the moment, um, uh, nor uh, will the importance of social work uh, be as clear uh, as, it, as it currently is. Um, I think, um, you know, I just saw uh, a notice where we're now at, I think we have surpassed 700,000 uh, deaths in the United States, 100,000 of them have occurred since the vaccine has been available. I think there's a lot of room uh, per, for intervention, uh, both with uh, public health and social work, um, uh, given those numbers. Um, which brings me to the integration of public health social work. Um, so public health social work, uh, sometimes called PHSW, uh, is an integrated approach to preventing, addressing, and solving human health problems. Emphasis on preventing. This is something that um, I think uh, social work has uh, uh, a lot of potential to do more of, um, and we need to do more of it. Um, I think it would make our work um, in, in kind of secondary and tertiary intervention a lot simpler if we um, if we integrated a bit more prevention. Uh, and public health social workers uh, prioritize prevention, health impact, population health, and health equity. The dual degree program, as, as uh, doc, Dr. Congress was explaining, um, it is a collaboration between the Graduate School of Social Service at Fordham and uh, uh, Mount Sinai, um, early Icon School of Public Health at Mount Sinai. And through this program, you can earn both an MSW and an MPH in three years if you're full time. So this is important. It's not just one degree plus another degree, do both full um, kind of in their entirety, we have um, a special arrangement thanks to uh, the work that Dean Congress did prior to 2013. So program details. Uh, in total, all uh, the programs together, uh, you'll take a total of 99 credits. That is different uh, than if you were to do these separately. So if you did them separately, I believe you would take what is it, 66 credits um, at GSS and 45, um, is that what it is, Jen? Uh, credits yes, at, 45. at Mount Sinai. Um, that's 111 credits total. So you are saving money on 12 credits if you do this as a dual degree. There's a flexible schedule. Um, MSW classes are offered what feels like sometimes around the clock, uh, weekdays, evenings, Saturdays, um, and we operate on a semester schedule over here at GSS. Um, Jen, I don't know if you want to say a bit about the MPH schedule. Yeah, so our MPH courses are offered in the evenings between 4 and 9 p.m., and we run on a trimester schedule, so you actually get to switch out of classes every 12 weeks, um, which means you can take more classes <laughs> and more topics to cover. Which is also exciting. I mean, one of the, uh, when I th when I think about um, kind of the opportunities at Monsanto, one of the things that comes to mind is these early evening classes. This is perfect to kind of complete your MPH after you've completed, you know, that, that you know, uh, you get through your, your MSW, so you complete that first, and then you still have some MPH work to do. You can take your classes while you are actually working, accruing hours towards your licensure. So I love the fact that um, these courses are offered in, in early evenings. 
there are um, uh, a variety of plans of study and program tracks, um, and we do not proscribe them because all of you have so many different interests and there are uh, a number of different uh, program plans that you can choose based on your uh, kind of what you want to take at Fordham and also your um, your concentration at Mount Sinai. At Fordham, as many of you know, um, it's a flexible schedule. Uh, you have four required selectives across four domains. So that's practice with individuals and families, communities and organizations, policy and research. And this is after you complete your generalist year. Importantly, if you enroll in the dual degree program, there are waivers out of some core and selective requirements for MSW and MPH students. Yeah, for the MPH side, everyone earning a Master of Public Health is going to get foundations in biostatistics, epi, sociobehavioral health, policy, environmental health. Uh, but on the MPH side, we also have uh, specialty tracks. So you can concentrate and aim your electives towards global health, healthcare management, um, or dive deeper into epi, biostats, environmental. Um, there's a lot of different ranges because people seek out these different opportunities in, in the field of public health. I think most dual degree students, uh, you know, Dean Congressman and Jen, please chime in. I think most dual degree students are drawn towards healthcare management, health promotion, disease prevention, global health. Um, these are kind of where people cluster. We do occasionally have somebody who chooses epidemiology. Mm -hmm. um, I think we have an N of one. Um, and, and I'm not sure if we've had anybody in environmental health um, outcomes research or biostatistics quite yet, but less than 10 years old. So, so we'll see it someday. Curriculum. Um, in order to, um, uh, to do the dual degree, uh, you can do, again, as, as I said, you can do it in three years if you're full time. It is a little bit of a grind, um, just a warning, um, but, but it's worth it. Um, and you have to satisfy uh, course requ requirements both in uh, the MSW program and your MPH specific track. I shouldn't say concentration anymore um, because we don't have those anymore at GSS. Um, with re respect to field, um, you know, traditionally there has been a requirement of 1,200 field hours over the two-year period. This has been modified, as many of you know, um, because of COVID-19 uh, uh, precautions um, and crises. And, and Anne, I'm not sure if you have more updated information than I might about what, you know, uh, the current status is. Um, I think we're still in the 900-hour it's uh, currently a student who's doing both the generalist and the specialist year would do a total of 900 hours. A student coming in and as an advanced standing student would have a requirement of 500 hours. Okay. Thank you so much. And then Jen, you want to yeah. explain the APE? <laughs> yeah, I'll talk about, so the applied practice experience is equivalent to what a field work would be for the MPH degree. And what this is, it's 150 hours where you are with a site doing a public health project that involves community engagement. You might be developing materials for this site, you know, being engaged with stakeholders, board of directors. There's a lot of different types of projects that qualify. And usually we see dual degree students doing their applied practice experience at the same site that they're doing their field work, or they are involved in other projects that, um, have this joint interest. And, and we work with students to figure out what is that project? What is your calling there? And I think a couple of things that come to mind, um, and certainly this was kind of pre-COVID, a couple of our MSW and PH global, uh, global health concentrators did a summer practicum. I think somebody went to Argentina, somebody else was I went to the Dominican Republic. So there's a lot of opportunities, um, uh, uh, you know, to do very different things if, you know, you want a different experience than, than what you're having at your field placement. Exactly, and um, Abby, I think that's a really good point. Like for the dual degree, you're welcome to overlap and learn these two um, fields in, in a directed path that you're already on, um, or yeah, use Mount Sinai to explore other opportunities. We offer that Global Health Summer Experience. It's an application-based competitive process, but we try to place people at sites all over the world. In COVID, however, it has been done remotely, but people are still able to collaborate with the global organizations that we work with. 
the, and, and our ideal has been that your field placement for the MSW would coincide with the field placement requirement for MPA. Yeah. We're not always able to work it out, but I mean, that's really, you know, the ideal. We certainly can discuss, you know, different opportunities with you. Absolutely. Can you hear me? Yes. Or, yeah. Okay, I'm, right, but I'm sitting atop the computer. And I'm... Yeah, so we should definitely discuss what is on everyone's mind. I think a big part of this program is individual advising to figure out what it is that you want to do with this degree. And then, um, Abby, can you just go back to the last slide for a little bit. Experience, sorry. Yeah, yes. I want to mention. So the one last degree requirement for the MPH degree is a written culminating experience, so that you're providing master's level research work or other type of professional writing, like a grant proposal or a business plan or other, um, you know, other works that will help prepare you to be a professional. Okay, you can go to the next slide. Evan. Thank you. So I think, you know, we, we're, we're in this uh, uh, unique uh, point in time um, that is clearly going to bring increases in job opportunities for people who understand public health and people who have a social skill set. Um, I know that there are a lot of um, uh, publications being written by leaders in the public health field that we're about to see the second pandemic. Um, I think it has kind of already started to rear its ugly head in terms of, you know, uh, mental and behavioral health, in terms of uh, longstanding uh, challenges with social determinants of health and these types of things. This is really the bread and butter of social work. Um, so if you have the understanding of public health undergirding um, your social work practice, uh, the sky will be the limit um, in terms of opportunities that you might find um, uh, yourself uh, being presented with. You do come out with a unique skill set and, and a unique perspective uh, that allow you to really run the continuum of social service um, and healthcare systems. Um, you know, I think that um, you're not kind of pigeonholed as a, you know, into a macro position. You can still be a clinician and be a public health social worker. I do know that um, kind of anecdotally, we haven't done you know, any studies on this, but people who graduate with the MSW MPH are rise to the ranks in terms of promotions faster. They have higher salaries starting um, and uh, uh, kind of more opportunities for, uh, for earning more money based on the promotions that they have. You can also very easily kind of, you know, move around um, into different uh, types of work uh, or types of professional um, kind of occupations um, because you do have such a unique skill set. I mean, some of, and this is not an exhaustive list, but some career opportunities, I mean, you could be a health educator, you could be the health commissioner, you could be a hospital administrator, you could be, you know, a public health um, uh, uh, work in a public health department as a director, and you could be a lobbyist, you could start an NGO, um, you could direct a professional association. Um, you see all these director, director, director uh, things listed, um, because that's over time, where people ultimately kind of find themselves um, in these leadership roles. And now more than ever, because of course, because of COVID, health is on everyone's mind. So it really helps to propel you to a high level position if you're both a social worker and a public health person. Absolutely. Yeah. And do you want to talk a little bit about admissions on the GSS side? Or, well, actually, I don't know if we need to because I think everybody is here or graduated. Well, so here's what I'm going to say yeah. instead. Yeah, <laughs> so forgive ahead. me. But when I'm listening to what you can do and the idea of the pandemic, one of the big things that's really come out is the discrepancies in uh, availability and access to healthcare and education about healthcare and really working with uh, communities and individuals where they are. And I think that the MSW MPH really uniquely um, qualifies and prepares somebody for that. And to me, that's so exciting that it's actually making my hair stand on end when I talk about it. So um, what a great opportunity to take these two sides, be go into a leadership position and be able to affect change on those levels. Thank you, Anne. Yeah, um, so I know, yeah, a lot of our audience is already in the MSW program. That's great because the application process is separate. So your next step 
to getting involved in the dual degree program is um, you would complete an application to the MPH. And our admission requirements are a little bit different, but we have a slide showing that and it's very clear on our website. And generally you're all in a good position to come in in our recommended pathway. As what we have been seeing is students that start at Fordham first and complete a year and then join the MPH are a little bit more settled into their graduate training, have some more direction, have some more time to start taking those evening classes um, and can tr tr transition a little bit better. Um, some other pathways though that we've had is people starting both degrees concurrently or other, so like right near the end of their MSW, they start the MPH. We're definitely happy to work with you and chat. In fact, we encourage you, if you're thinking about really applying to the dual degree, connect with us, talk with us, and we can just guide you and, and help you through that application process or your thoughts, or if you have questions or concerns, we're always happy to chat. Yes. To reiterate, please don't do a cold application. If you're here and you're gonna apply, communicate with us, let us know, connect with us. So. Yeah, so we can skip the MSW application process. Here's the list of requirements for the MPH application. We use a centralized uh, service. So that's the SOFAS application for all schools and programs of public health. We'd like to some official transcripts, clearly also from your Fordham experience. Um, we're usually looking for strong GPAs. Um, really, it's it's graduate level, so we're looking that you can do a 3.0, and you know everyone's balancing their work life, their personal life, graduate school. We're not looking for straight A students. <laughs> um, we want to know that you're passionate about public health, and you're going to tell us that through your personal statement, through the letters of recommendation. Um, through the activities that you do professionally and personally that you'll share with us on your resume or um, through the application process. If you uh, went to a, an institution that teaches in any other language but English or um, English is your second language, we'd like to get that TOEFL exam, um, but happy to chat. We can always connect you with a admissions representative from Mount Sinai if you have very specific application questions as well. And yeah, deadlines. So I know you all probably know your Fordham stuff is all good. For Mount Sinai, if you're looking to start in the fall term of next year, the latest that you can apply to Mount Sinai is June 2nd. There are other entry points, like I mentioned before, perhaps you might be on a path that starts you this January or this April, the application deadlines are listed there. Um, but I think, you know, you have time, but also connect with us happy to accept that application early and, and you know, have your plan already set. Oh, Elaine, you're muted. I you know. are. Okay, yeah. Um, also, one thing, there is no GRE requirement now, right, Jennifer? Yeah, there used Correct. to be. And some, you know, so, so I know this often is a concern, but it's something you don't have to worry about if you haven't taken it, um, that you're not required to. Exactly, you're right. We did away with the GRE even before COVID because we know it's not a good predictor of graduate school success. We just, in our in the application for the public health degree, we wanna know that you're passionate and that you understand the field you're getting into. Um, we're just really curious about you, not necessarily all the quantitative scores. Now the big question everybody has concerns about how are we going to pay for this? So it is not, um, uh, you know, it, it is a significant commitment. Um, at Fordham, as you know, tuition is $963 per credit hour. At Sinai, it's a little bit higher. Um, it's $1,300 per credit hour. The good news is that the split between the 99, um, it shakes out to 60 credits at Fordham and 39 over at Mount Sinai. So we're taking less of the more expensive um, uh, credits. Both programs um, have financial aid, have work study, there are scholarships available, and there are teaching assistantship opportunities. These are typically uh, kind of communicated to students, um, with the exception, I believe, of, of financial aid, after you've been admitted to the program. Jen, I'm not sure if you want to say more about the Sinai side of this or... Yeah, at Sinai, we have work study opportunities, teaching assistantships, um, RA ships. Some students even find part-time employment. I think everyone chooses a little bit of a different path. 
Mm -hmm. um, but again, like we are happy to chat with you if you have any questions about these opportunities. And again, uh, kind of going back to the schedule that like, you know, four to nine course offering. So, um, you know, I'm not sure um, uh, from the brief introductions that we heard if anybody, you know, is considering pursuing clinical licensure in social work. So if you are, this is like the ideal schedule for you because you can finish your MSW on schedule those first two you know, years or what if you're on a three-year plan, but as scheduled, enrolling in the dual degree is not going to disrupt your, your MSW graduation timeline. Um, for those of you who, who don't know kind of the rules uh, around licensure, you cannot sit for the licensure exam in New York until you have that MSW diploma in hand. Um, so you have to register, wait, then schedule, then sit, then pass, and then at that point, you can begin to accrue hours of supervision and practice towards um, that second tier of licensure, um, which I believe in New York, uh, first tier is LMSW, second tier is LCSW. Um, one of the important things, if you are considering, you know, kind of that uh, professional development pathway, you want to be out in the field. You want to start accruing those hours as soon as you possibly can. And, and many, um, Organizations will, you know, uh, be flexible with you, so you can take a class, you know, that start, you know, starts at four, starts at five thirty, starts at six, starts at whatever type of a thing, so you can you can really make it work. The other thing to know is that many um, uh, large organizations do offer some sort of uh, tuition remission or tuition assistance if you are enrolled in any kind of continuing education. Some hospitals will pay, you know, if you're hired there and you're working full time, they'll pay 5,000 a year, you know, or 2,000 a year or some amount every year towards your tuition um, um, at a, an accredited program. So there are creative ways to finance, um, finance your degree. Yeah, and here we just have a slide of all of our contact information for questions. Um, we're happy to hear from you. Again, connect if you're really intending on submitting an application. We want to know who you are. We want to chat. We want to get an email from you, short introduction, um, and find out how we can help you and support you. Um, we're also going to send out the slide deck um, afterwards, and I will also be holding some office hours. So if you want to just pop in and chat with me about your uh, pursuits in the MPH, happy to do that. Are there any questions? I had a question that came up and hopefully I'll get the ball rolling so others will ask. Um, are the hours that are used for the Fordham field work, is there any time where those hours could also apply toward the MPH um, work hours, field work hours? So for the MPH, we have the applied practice experience, which if you propose to do it at your MSW fieldwork site and you're doing a public health project, yes, that completely overlaps. Um, also, we have that requirement of the culminating experience, which is a written work. But if you're doing an extensive writing project about the site or health topic that you are working on with your fieldwork, you're welcome to continue to develop your expertise by using that for your culminating experience as well. Um, so we, they're definitely supportive and projects that can be built on top of each other. What other questions are on people's minds or um, is there anything you expected to hear today that you haven't yet? About how many students typically participate in this dual degree program? I may have missed that answer. Sorry if you said it already. No, I don't think we shared that. So about every year we get between two to six students, I would say. Some years we've gotten even more. Um, we also get spring admits. I think everyone's a little bit on a different path. Um, but it's, a, I would say, a tight cohort. You get to know and see friendly faces. And are there specific um, career kind of guidance counselors for the dual degree program? Or can we speak with career counselors at Sinai as well? Yeah, so I can speak to the Sinai side of things. We have a public health and health administrations program career manager. We also have a larger graduate school career manager and they also work together to host events, bring recruiters to campus, employers, career fairs, professional development conferences and events and individual coaching and job strategy um, 
job search strategy type of coaching. Um, so you're definitely, as a dual degree student, you're welcome to all the resources that Mount Sinai has to provide. Um, Abby, do you wanna talk about the Fordham side? Sure, so I know that there are, um... I think towards the end of the of your second year, and please feel free to jump in if you know uh, a bit more about this than than I do. There are kind of informational sessions about kind of job market preparation, a lot of licensure uh, kind of resources available um, uh, as well. Um, and if you were a dual de degree student, um, you actually have direct access um, to me um, and to Dean Congress, um, who can vouch for you and certainly. Uh, Pave some professional pathways um, depending on what your what your interests are um, specifically. Yeah. And do you know more about the kind of career counseling circumstances at GSS? Um, I, I think I would say that there are a couple of things that I would uh, point out. One is that we do have um, something called Handshake, and Handshake is a um, is something that you as a student can log into now to see jobs that are posted. The way Handshake works is that um, some agencies will send us jobs and we put them in there, but they also have access to directly upload jobs that um, are coming up with them. So they do get renewed all the time. So it's worth, it's, it's part of your Fordham um, portal to be able to set up that. It's one of your apps. So go ahead and check that out. That's going to be interesting. Um, also, there is uh, in the spring, Dr. White Ryan will do um, sessions to help you with um, writing your resume and um, preparing for jobs and of course for licensure as well but that's an, kind of another animal um, so there are some different things that are there to support you in that uh, area i think the other um uh thing to be aware of on the on the gss side so you know i don't have the data on this i'm not even sure if there's data available on this but for a substantial portion of graduates your second year placement like turns into your first job. So it's kind of this implicit, like, you know, you're, you, you have this kind of onboarding year. If you like it, you know, that is, and if they like you and it's a good fit and this is the population you want to work with right off the bat and it, it were, you know, all of the other kind of, you know, very life variables work out. Um, Certainly that was the case for me um, when I uh, did the MSW and PH program at Boston University. And I think that that's a pretty fair, you know, kind of thing to say around, um, around MSW programs writ large um, is that your, your second year placement can, um, can very much turn into um, a, uh, a first job um, should you want it. That's, that's how it worked out for me. Um, the other thing, um, uh, to know is that um, there are a lot of people uh, in this room. So in Congress and I, um, and, the, and the previous director of the dual degree program, we are all members of the American Public Health Association. And we um, all actually, actually we all do have, do have leadership positions. Um, I believe in Congress, you are the governing counselor or cycling off into uh, awards chair. I've been program chair um, for a number of years. Um, and I believe uh, Elizabeth Broadbeck, um, who used to be affiliated until recently uh, with the dual degree program is also a governing counselor. I bring this up because that is another kind of professional networking um, resource that you will have at your disposal. Um, we're all in a specific section. So the American Public Health Association, biggest public health entity in the United States. I think they have you know, 20, 25,000 members um, and they make all kinds of policy proposals, statements, you know, what have you about, um, about public health. I believe there are 32 different sections, one of which is the public health social work section, which is invaluable because sometimes, and you will find this if you choose to do the dual degree, you are the one who has to make sense of how am I going to fit the public health with the social work? I'm in my you know, field placement and nobody's doing any prevention. Like, how, how, don't they know anything about public health? And you have to kind of be that bridge a little bit. So, you know, and alternatively, you might be in a public health setting. It's like, how, where are their, their core active listening skills? What's happening here? You know, so you see it, you know, on both sides. And it, it's a, it's a, you know, at times very tough kind of, um, uh, conundrum to navigate, it's getting easier, it's getting better. 
upside of the pandemic is I think that that's helped a little bit. Um, but the public health social work section is really dedicated to bridging that gap and trying to make sense of these, you know, fields where it's almost like a Venn diagram where there's a very big overlapping piece, but there's still some parts that, that don't overlap. Um, so we just offer that up as, as another kind of professional development resource that, um, that is unique to this, this dual degree program. There's yeah, one other... Oh, I'm sorry. There's one other thing I wanted to mention that is the uh, grad fair that is um, run every March and it's um, done concurrently through um, NYU, Columbia, Fordham and other schools of social work in the New York metro area. And it allows um, students who are graduating to come to meet agency representatives from the agencies that work with the school to offer field placements that are actually hiring. So Unfortunately, the last two have been canceled because of COVID, but hopefully by uh, March of 2022, you'll be able to start um, thinking of attending that. And if you're not graduating right away, then you know by 2023, hopefully it'll be a really sure thing. But that's a great opportunity. And it is with agencies that are looking to hire people who are newly um, graduated. So and I apologize, apologize, Dr. Congress. Well, no, that's okay. Yeah. Well, I was just gonna follow up with what uh... Dr. Ross said, uh, uh, you know, about uh, uh, the American Public Health Association and the social work site, please join us. So you can join as a student, you know, it, it's a reduced amount. Can you come to our conferences? You, you know, you meet other people. Maybe you want to um, submit a proposal to do a, you know, to do a poster. I mean, you know, it's an award. You can get an award. I mean, it's really a way to jumpstart your career, you know, your career. And maybe some, uh, Someday, well, this year is going to be in person as well as virtual, and I mean they're fantastic to go to. We meet lots and lots of people there, and that I mean it provides a good opportunity. Uh, also, also, it's um, you know I'm always getting announcements about people who are looking to hire you know say a social workers, and some of them are like social workers in the public health field, and I definitely will forward them to you know, to um, potential students I know who are graduating, you know, in the, in the job market. Two more quick things about APHA. There's also leadership opportunities for you. So there is a student liaison section or a student liaison position within the public health social work section. This was filled consecutively, I think, since 2016 by a Fordham MSW MPH student um, and so, and, and the role of a student uh, liaison position is to liaise between the public health social work section and the student section of APHA, which is one of the largest and most powerful um, uh, 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 sections, I think, um, uh, in the organization. And then if you are um, kind of interested in attending the conference, it's always in, in November, as Dean Congress said, it's, it's in person, but it's like this hybrid conference this year. So some of the things are you know, online and some are in person. I think the best experience is an in-person experience um, and what we have done consistently for um, both for dual degree students specifically, but also for the Sinai community is, is uh, a presentation on how do you actually write an APHA abstract that's going to get accepted. And we typically do this in January because the deadline to submit things is always end of February um, to try to help you kind of think through some ideas that you might have um, and that type of thing. And the public health social work section um, has established uh, prioritizing acceptance of student abstracts um, because we feel that the conference is really a, a you know important uh, professional development experience that everybody should should have um, you know if they're um, if they're able to avail themselves of it um, and we've been able to institute that um, um, over the past almost decade at this point. I think that's it for APHA for now. I put the link in the chat for anyone who yeah, wants to follow yeah, up. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, that's and I will, one more thing. I will say that some students who have gone, who have either been student liaisons or they haven't, um, I actually think that one MSW MPH graduate is now the like communications director of the section. So it's like she sends out all the newsletters. It's Whitney Wortham, if anybody, right, right. if you remember her, Jen, and you remember yeah. her, yeah, I remember Elaine. Her. Um, but some people have submitted, I think probably like five-ish students have submitted, you know, their culminating experience and turned it into a poster or their, you know, 
advance their APE if that were something that was kind of a, a research type of study. So there's a way to use what you're already doing um, as a mechanism for uh, having a professional presentation at a conference uh, like APHA. And it's always important to um, MPHMSW students who are presenting like po uh, posters at the conference. Another thing I should I, I should mention, I, I'm a fellow at the New York Academy of Medicine, and every year we have a student from, you know, from each of the social work schools in the city. And I'll tell you, we, you know, we almost always select an MSW MPH student, you know, to be the, the person representing us at, at, you know, at, at Fordham at this, you know, citywide event. Because it's been, you know, we did a virtual last year and we're probably going to do it. Well, I'm not sure. It's going to be, it's usually in April. So we'll see what the COVID situation is like, you know, at that point. But it may, you know, maybe virtual or maybe in, in person. But that's another opportunity that, that you have to present. Because this is really important to, you know, to build up your resume, your CV in terms of looking for, uh, looking for future jobs. Because. I think potential employers are very impressed by this. Last comments from our presenters. I have one comment and that's just connect with us. It's all about networking. It's all about telling us who you are and what you're interested in. And then we can support you in whatever that path is. Yeah. Maybe we should put up the last page and has people's emails again. Sure, yeah, and then you take a screenshot. Yeah. yeah, and we will, I mean, we'll send this out as an attachment as well. Folks can see this? Yes. If you would like to get in touch with any of us. And I would just say as a, as a person who is a product of a dual degree program, like it has changed the way I think about social work, the way I practice social work, the way I, you know, kind of do all things social work. It has also changed the way that I operationalize public health and public health principles. And if we're serious, I mean, I know that, you know, uh, health equity has now become a priority for, for many fields. It kind of started with public health. So if you really want to do this equity stuff, it can be incredibly helpful to have that solid foundation that the MPH will provide you with. And with that, if there are no more questions, hopefully you all took a screenshot of that last slide. And if you didn't check your email because you will get the whole presentation sent to you um, and you will have that slide. Um, thank you all for coming. Um, it's really inspiring to see so many people who are interested in public health and public health social work um, and uh, trying to find our way to the other side you know, of, mm -hmm. of the pandemic because I really think public health social work is the ticket. Nice Thank you, you everyone. Thank you very much. <laughs>